Good morning. Welcome to everybody. If you're in person or online on the beautiful day that it is to Culp United Methodist Church, part of the Catawissa Parish. So if you have your bulletins, I know there's a lot of good stuff in here today. Um, we're collecting canned fruit for the month of September for the food bank. And today at the Gerhardt's house, Two o'clock is our youth group kickoff. We're having swimming, volleyball, pizza. So whether you're young or young at heart, you are welcome to come on over. Um, gathering school supplies for the shoe boxes, which will be coming up before you know it. So if you are shopping, keep that in mind. And less than a week away is our annual chicken and waffle dinner. We are looking forward to it very much. So that is on Saturday from 4 to 7 here at Culp. I know that they would love to have donations, love to have workers. And if you can't do either one of those, just love to have people come and eat the waffles. So we will be happy to have you in whatever capacity. Uh, there's a Women's Fall Bible Study coming up on Thursdays. And I believe my husband, the other Gerhardt, has something he wants to tell you. Hmm, get ready. Hmm. Thank you, sweetie. All right. I, uh, you may have heard, we're going to start a daily Bible app on the, uh, on the smartphone uh, Bible study. And I think some people have had questions about it. So I wanted to give you guys a guide to know if this is the right study for you or not. So if you could hit that. So I have three questions for you this morning. Very important questions. Now, these are to yourself. No need to show hands. Like, yes or no. That's all they are, okay? So question number one. Am I a person who desires to spend more time in the Bible? To yourself, yes or no? Think about it. Good. Okay, question. Nope, go back. Sorry. That's okay. Oh, it might be the same. Question number two. Are you a person who always finds yourself like, you know, I want to spend more time in the Bible, but I'm just too busy, or when they have Bible studies at church, it just never fits my schedule. I'm too busy, too much time. Yes or no? To yourself. Okay? Great. Question number three. Am I a person who has access to a smartphone? Uh, a tablet, Kindle, iPad, or a computer with internet access? Yes or no to yourself. For those of you in the cyber world, that answer should be yes right now if you're confused. We would know if you say no. Okay, now, if you answered no to all three of those questions, talk to Adam about a sermon on uh, humbleness, uh, humility, or talk to me about a tech upgrade. Um, if you answered yes, then I have good news. This study fits your schedule, you can do this. Uh, we're not meeting at a standard time. It is whenever you want to do it. Um, so if you are a person, you're like, I'm a morning person, I want to do it at 5 a.m. in the morning, go ahead. I will not be joining you at that time. My alarm clock doesn't go that low, but uh, you could do it then. If you're a person who's a late night owl, let's do it 10, 11 at night, you can do it then. It takes five minutes. If you have five digits on your hand, that's how many minutes you need to do it every day. It might take less if you're a speed reader, uh, six if you're really not that fast of a reader. So everybody can do this. Um, it's on the smartphone. See me if you have questions. It's called the Uversion Bible app, or if you just go to your, your app store, whether it's the uh, Google Play Store or the uh, Android app store, uh, just search Bible. I guarantee it'll be the first result. It's got 10 billion downloads on it, so it always comes up first. Uh, you just create an account, which is free. They do not market to you or anything like that. Um, and then we will start this next Sunday. Uh, we're going to run it through the month of September, see how it goes. It's, we're going to do seven-day studies. So we'll do it next Sunday to the following Saturday, and then we'll switch to do something different. You can join the first one. You can join the second one. You can join the third one. You can join them all. Or you can just do one, see how it works for you. Um, it's basically a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of a devotional and then some uh, short scripture to read. And then there's a place optionally for comments. You don't have to comment. 
you certainly can comment. Sue in the back is already searching for her phone. I can see she wants to comment. Sue likes to type, so she'll be a good commenter. So um, it's a good time. Uh, I think everybody will enjoy these studies. And like I said, it's, you don't have to come anywhere. You don't have to drive anywhere. Just pull out your smartphone and do it while you're waiting for something. Uh, and spend more time with the Lord and with each other. Thank you. He doesn't even drink coffee. So. <laughs> He's just excited about tech and excited about the Bible. So he's your guy. He will definitely help you get connected with that. Um, just to let you know, there are new Daily Bread devotionals in the side room as well. And tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock here, there will be a ladies' meeting to help get the grill ready for the waffle dinner. Um, are there any other announcements? Yes, Louie. Thank you, Lou. Yes, if you didn't hear that or if you're online, they will take your help all through the day that day for the chicken and waffle dinner. It starts in the morning and everybody has jobs to do and it just is a great time, I can tell you. We're looking forward to it. Any other announcements? Okay. Let us renew our spirits now in God, listening for his word and his good plans and his new mercies this morning as we gather together for worship. And join me in our call to worship. Be merciful to us, O Lord. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. It is in God that we put our trust. It is God that we worship and praise. Open our hearts and minds to know you more. Now please join me in our opening prayer. God of refuge, thank you for delivering us through this week and bringing us together to worship you today. Thank you direct us this worship that it could be honorable and pleasing to you. We seek to honor you and worship you today and every day as our Savior and Lord. We pray this all in the name of Christ. Amen. Now please join me in our opening hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, number 302.
Now you may be seated. Please join me in our scripture reading from Psalms chapter 56, verses 1 through 7 and verses 10 through 13. Be merciful to me, my God, for my enemies are in hot pursuit. All day long they press their attack. My adversaries pursue me all day long. In their pride, many are attacking me. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise. In God, I trust and am not afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? All day long, they twist my words. All their schemes are for my ruin. They conspire, they lurk, they watch my steps, hoping to take my life. Because of their wickedness, do not let them escape. In your anger, God, bring the nations down. In God, whose word I praise, in the Lord, whose word I praise, in God I trust and am not afraid. What can man do to me? I am under vows to you, my God. I will present my thank offerings to you. For you have delivered me from death and my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. Now let us bring before God our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for these gifts that we present upon your altar. We ask that you would take and multiply them for the furthering of your kingdom here upon this troubled earth, and that you would guide and direct us throughout this new week, that we would use all of the resources that you've entrusted to us, and that we would use them for your glory and for your honor. We pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Are there uh, joys to lift up this morning? We'll start there. Joys. Our family all went back to school and everybody's having a great week. So, And um, I hope that the kiddos at Southern and the teachers also have a great start. Absolutely. Uh, back to school and the start of back to school, whether it's uh, um, you know K through 12 or if it's uh, college or whatever it might be, uh, the joy uh, of education and learning that it, it brings as well. Other joys. Catherine has one there. I have a couple. One is I had three doctor appointments this past week, and I got all good news. Yay, yay, yay. My bone density, I have the bones of a 30-year-old. Wonderful. Unbelievable. <laughs> Wish my husband was so lucky. And I've been blessed. My grandkids have been coming over and helping me can. I've been canning my butt off. 64 quarts of spaghetti sauce we put out in two days. <laughs> that was a lot of work. Now today we're going to can ham and bean soup. Very nice. Other joys? <laughs> Ooh, now they're coming. Um, just a joy of uh, fellowship with friends last evening. It was a beautiful night and we had a great time. Um, another joy is Jeff and I found out that we we finally have all seven of our grandchildren home, and we just found out uh, Friday evening that our last child, Kayla, mm -hmm. and her um, boyfriend are moving back home to Pennsylvania in like four weeks. <laughs> so we're excited. Absolutely. Other joys. I saw some hands. I'm happy that school is finally here because I really enjoy school. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm just happy and praising God that we got rain, much needed rain. We could use more, but we'll take everything that we can get when it comes from the skies. Absolutely. Joy of rain and uh, what that does to uh, the crops in such a short amount of time. Other joys. Not seeing. 
see in any. Uh, are there concerns that we need to lift up this morning? Our internet is a concern this morning. Yes. Are we online at all this morning? No. Okay. So we're going to pray for those online that uh, aren't online <laughs> right now. Um, okay, perfect. Uh, sometimes technical difficulties just happen. Uh, and so uh, good news is here, there's no buffering. So you don't need to worry about that. Brian is smiling back there. and it just <laughs> He understands, unfortunately, all too well as well. <laughs> Are there other concerns we need to lift up this morning? Louis, unspoken. unspoken prayers. Uh, I'd ask prayers uh, for my mom. Uh, she was she's been struggling with back issues since uh, the end of June, and she finally yesterday, through urgent care and a trip to the emergency room, found out that she's fractured her back in three different places, uh, and so she is uh, has a phone call into a neurosurgeon for tomorrow. Uh, but she would greatly appreciate, and she can't see me online right now either, so I can say this, uh, she would greatly appreciate prayers uh, for healing and recovering. She has been in uh, a great amount of pain for the last two months, uh, so she would greatly appreciate that. Uh, other concerns this morning? Lori? Yeah, just for um, safe return to schools, keep our kids healthy and the schools safe, and that we have a great year. Absolutely. Others? Sue? Um, just prayers for my mom that uh, as she's transitioning into moving into a new apartment. Okay. Certainly prayers for your mom in that transition. And for you as a family as well with that. Other concerns this morning? Um, for Tabitha Yost, formerly Drumheller's grandfather. Okay. Prayers for her. Others. Timmy saw it before I did. That's impressive. This is back to praise. This is not concerns, so, but my mom, I can say her age because it's not online, but my mom's <laughs> 75th birthday is today, and I'm very grateful we get to celebrate it with her. Happy birthday to her. Any other? Others. Yep, uh, for the family of Jay Orlasky, he passed away this week. Uh, a small graveside service was yesterday, and there's going to be a memorial service uh, September 10th uh, at RCV Church to celebrate his life. Any others? Prayers for Ned Getty. Prayers for continued prayers for Ned Getty. We have a couple that tunes in uh, online and worships with us uh, weekly, uh, Ronnie and Jan Steiger. They've attended worship here once or twice. Uh, she, uh, Ronnie, is leaving, I believe it is today, for a mission trip to Honduras, uh, and she does not like to fly. So uh, she is asking for lots of prayers for them and their team as they go down to Honduras for a mission trip. She's been there multiple times in years past. Uh, but just prayers for safe travel and that they can uh, be the hands and feet of Christ in whatever ways Christ calls them to be used. Yes, yes. Yes, uh, she, she just doesn't like flying in general uh, and then flying into Honduras adds to things, but thankfully they've been there before. They have... Um, a group that uh, protects them in security from the gangs within Honduras as they travel through the streets to get to where they're to where they're going. Any other concerns or joys or God moments to share this morning? Not seeing any. We're gonna do uh, the pastoral prayer and then we're gonna do the blessing of the backpacks before the kids head down to uh, Sunday school this morning. Thank you, Timmy. Let us pray. Everlasting God, we thank you and we praise you for today, for the beauty of the sunshine this morning and the breeze, for this opportunity together as brothers and sisters in you and to simply worship you, to lay all of our cares and anxieties and troubles before you, 
and are reminded through Scripture that your burden, God, is light. You don't weigh us down. But you want to see us lifted up with you. And so God, in this time of worship, we surrender our lives and all that we have over to you. We lift it up to you as an offering that you would use it and, and use us in a, some way that we would make an impact for you and for your kingdom here upon this earth. Lord, we thank you for the opportunities this last week has presented to share your good news, to be your disciples, to learn more about you and to draw closer in our day-to-day walk. We thank You, God, that You presented us with opportunities that we could grow and stretch in our relationship with You. Opportunities that we could have moments of silent prayer and reflection with You. And as we enter into this new week, God, we pray that You would clear out all of the clutter and that You would make it painfully obvious to us. Your plan your design, your wishes for our lives. Lord, we pray for strength and endurance in the times of trial when the temptations of the world seem too much for us, that it may be easier for us to give in to the ways of the world than to hold fast to your truth, your wisdom. God, we pray that you would give us such faith that we would trust in you at all times and in all circumstances as you have taught us to do. We thank you for the joys and for the concerns that we were able to lift together in community this morning. That you hear the joys and you understand the concerns. And so God, we pray for healing where there needs to be healing. Peace where there needs to be peace. Affirmations where there needs to be affirmations. We pray God for your spirit to continually Reassure us, direct us, and lead us as we are Your children. God, we pray that You would forgive us of the ways that we have fallen short of Your glory and sinned against You. We pray that You would see our truly repentant hearts and forgive us. That we would leave here today free, light, unburdened. That we would go and the world would see that there is something different and special that comes with a relationship with You. Lord, we pray that this world would turn to You. That where there is anger or violence, where there is division, that You would enter in and provide Your healing and peaceful touch. We pray for our, our elected officials at every level. And we pray for Your peace your everlasting peace to come upon this earth. God, we pray all of this in the name of Christ, who is our Lord and our Savior and our Redeemer, and who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So, oh, we have a notification. All right. God has answered. All right. Um, We're going to do a blessing of the backpacks and blessing of a new school year. So I'm going to ask if you brought your backpack or planner or whatever it is, Uh, If you want to come forward to this area up here for a moment, and we're going to pray. And if you're involved in the school district in any way, at any level, I'm going to ask that you would come forward as well. That's right, I'm getting the looks, but I'm looking right back at you. (laughs) Mr. Ambassador. In any way, you guys can come up here. Keep on coming back. We got lots of room. I don't generally bite. That's okay. That's all right. Come on down. There's more room. Slide on in. There's plenty of room. Okay. First, an observation. 
Do you notice there's more than one person going into our schools? Did you notice that, congregation? What's left of you out there? You need to respond so I know you're there. Yes? As long as even just one of these individuals is in the school, God is in our schools. Because they go as disciples of Jesus Christ into the schools. Grant, when did you start? Okay. (laughs) But as long as there is even just one of them, God is present in our schools in some way through the living out of, of Christian teachings, of a life that has been transformed by Jesus Christ. God is in our schools. And so we rejoice in that. And so I'm just going to ask that uh, you would bow with me in a moment of prayer as we bless them, uh, their backpacks or whatever they have, or even just their individual selves as we enter into a new school year. Let's pray. God of all knowledge and wisdom, we thank You and we praise You for this new school year, for the opportunities that it will bring, the challenges that will go with them, We thank You, God, for the ways that You allow our minds to question and think, to learn, to question. And so, God, we give You thanks for our schools, our teachers, our staff and administrators and school boards as they have prepared and anticipated the start of this year. God, we pray that this year would be full of learning. We pray that it would be full of new friends and expectations of of growth. We pray that it would be a year of working together in teams, solving problems, and learning more about this world that You have created, God. We pray for safety within our schools, that You would surround them with a barrier that cannot be penetrated by harm or evil. We pray, God, that You would surround our schools with Your love and Your care that You would lift up those who are struggling, that You would comfort those who need Your comfort, and that You would guide and direct us as we seek to learn more about this world around us. God, we give You thanks for all of these individuals and for Your calls upon their lives as well. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Okay. And at this time, thank you. Uh, and the children can head down to Sunday school as well. Yeah. Our second scripture reading today comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 17. Let's, let's read this together too this morning. I don't know who has the copy. Yeah. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your redemption to sonship. And by Him we cry, Abba, Father, The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in His sufferings in order that we may also share in His glory. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O God, through me or in spite of me, speak to Your people today. Amen. Navigating Christianity has been the series we've been on this month. 
And today we wrap that series up in what I originally anticipated a strange topic when we talk about navigating Christianity, fear. Not necessarily on the top ten of things we necessarily even like to talk about. Not necessarily something that you would think about when you're talking about navigating in a faith in our faith journey with Jesus. But yet fear is something that is in each and every one of us as humans that we are. I don't need to raise hands and see who's experienced fear before because we all have. It is part of our human nature. It is part of our, our instincts that is designed into the body in which we have on this earth. Part of that is fear. Each and every one of us has exhibited it in the creaks and things that happened in the middle of the night from one time or another or when we're little, maybe something that's underneath or not underneath our bed or, or whatever it might be. Fear is something that we encounter daily in one way or another. And reflecting on fear and trying to figure this out, the best illustration that I could come up with that that met personally to me is when I met Lauren and her family. One of the uh oh, Lauren said, no, it's okay. One of the things that her family does that my family does not do, nor will we ever do, is ski. The Mellers are not a skiing people, generally. We like snow tubing, we can do that. But you put little two little sticks on our feet and we are not going down the face of a mountain. But that is what I did because, Lauren. I put the skis on and they said, oh, it'll be no problem, you'll catch it in no time, you're young, your bones will grow back quickly, it's great, you'll enjoy it. And they took me up on a bunny hill to start it out and immediately in those those moments there was fear. Fear of falling, (laughs) fear of what my future in-laws thought of me attempting to ski, fear in the moment that I was going to run someone else over and not be able to stop. But fear in those moments in skiing, and you can choose whatever it is in your lives as well that that brings you fear like skiing brings me fear. And in those moments, we can get to a place where we say, I'm just not even going to attempt it. I'm not even going to try it because you know what? It's just not worth it. I'm not going to do it. And we allow fear to paralyze us in what we're doing. Fear is something that's talked about over and over again in Scripture. If we go through the Old and the New Testament, God is continually calling on Israel in the Old Testament. He's, and Jesus is calling the disciples and the apostles are calling the new disciples and the New Testament to constantly do not worry. Don't live in fear. But yet, what are we so good at? Fear. Fear, as a Christian, is something that we will wrestle with throughout our entire lives. You're not going to get this answer that if you follow this one particular Scripture, it's going to erase fear from your lives because that doesn't exist. It's in our DNA to fear. But God tells us over and over again what to do when fear comes into our lives or when we experience moments of fear as followers of Jesus Christ. In navigating Christianity, it is essential to our DNA to know that we are not called to live in fear. That is not where we're called to live. That's not who we are as disciples of Jesus Christ. Our first hymn this morning, I didn't make a mistake in choosing it. Becky probably was saying a few words about me when she heard what number we were going to play, but... Christ the Lord is risen today. This Easter hymn is a reminder that Jesus has defeated death every day. It's not just on Easter Sunday. It's not that Easter is contained to one season or or day out of the year, but we celebrate that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has defeated death in all forms, has reversed death, in fact, in His resurrection from the grave. It is the foundation on which our faith is sits that we do not have to live in fear because death is often the thing that we fear in various forms the most in fact when we are scared or we are worried we will say i was scared to death we live in fear of death we live in fear 
of constantly in ways that we can preserve our life, preserve our families, preserve and protect and security. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. In fact, Scripture calls us to care and, and work with our families and, and bring them together and unite as a community and as a, a church community. But yet fear enters in and makes us do strange things. Don't have to raise your hand, but has fear ever driven you to do something really odd looking back at it? Fear moves us to do things that are odd. In Romans, I encourage you to open your Bibles. Romans chapter 8, we're going to start there. Romans chapter 8, Paul is talking to the followers of Jesus Christ in Rome, of course. Uh, He's talking to the Jews as well as the Gentiles, and he's sharing with them, starting in verse 12, Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if the Spirit... But by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought brought about your adoption to sonship. And he continues on from there. Brothers and sisters, Scripture is full of opportunities such as this as reminders that we are called not to live of the flesh anymore, not to live of the bodies that this world expects us to live, but to be reminded that we are new creations in Christ. Amen? And because we're new creations and we've surrendered our lives, we are not living according to the flesh and the ways of the flesh of this world because the flesh is only concerned in what it can see exteriorly, not what's going on interiorly. But the Spirit looks inwardly, knows the heart, knows the mind, and can bring us peace and understanding and, and, and a comfort throughout our days. Fear. The church, the church is in fear. Right now, the church, capital C, is, if it was a cartoon, would be a church with a face on it in panic mode. Worried. The church would be worried because the pews aren't quite as full as what we'd like them to be or the the world doesn't really accept God as we would want the world to accept God or or things just seem to be going out of control. The church, oftentimes today, we find ourselves in this kind of panicky mode, don't we? Living in fear. Don't want to offend. Don't want to upset. Don't want to make enemies with our neighbors. And so we live in this kind of dainty walking mode. But Christ calls us as He walked this earth. Paul calls us here in Romans not to live by the ways of the world, but to fully surrender our lives and live by the Spirit that God gives us. A Spirit, 1 Timothy says, is not to be timid, but to be bold. That is to reach out and share the good news of Jesus Christ to the world around us. We are called not to live in fear and allow fear to paralyze us. What if the world doesn't like us? What if I make a fool of myself skiing down the side of a mountain? What if I make a fool of myself sharing the good news of Jesus Christ? We cannot allow Satan to continually push us into these corners and to make us think that we have to live and be paralyzed by fear and of the the standards of this world. Because we serve Jesus Christ, who's our Lord and Savior, who has already defeated death, has already risen again from the grave. Amen? Amen. That's the God we serve. If we go out into the streets, right now there's not a lot of streets around here, but if we go to Catawissa or New Media, and we walk around the roads and we ask people, what is the greatest fear you have? What do you think the answer is going to be? Greatest fear. Ultimate biggest fear. Death. Death. And we say, let me tell you about Jesus who defeated death. Let me tell you about my Savior who has already been in the grave and rose again three days later and promises to all who follow and submit to Him that they will have eternal life with Him that death does not have the final answers 
I believe it's 1 Corinthians that uh, is shared in where it says, Where, O grave, is your victory? Where is it that you have won grave? You haven't. Because Christ is King and has already defeated death. We live in fear as individuals, as followers of Jesus Christ, and it has paralyzed us from sharing the good news of Christ to the world around us. If we go to our first Scripture today from Psalm 56, this is a good one. Don't miss it. David is writing this. And if you've been uh, following along in our Wednesday evening Bible study as well, it kind of fits right in with what we've kind of heard David been, has been going through in 1 Samuel. Uh, but it says, Be merciful to me, my God, for my enemies are in hot pursuit. All day long they press their attack. And he continues to go on. Verse 7, he says, Because of their wickedness, do not let them escape in your anger, God. Bring the nations down. And then jumping to verse 10, he says, In God whose word I praise, in the Lord whose word I praise, in God I trust. In God I trust and am not afraid. What can man do to me? I am under vows to you, my God. I will present my thank offerings to you. For you have delivered me from death and my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. What can the world do to us when our lives are in Christ? Is it, is it so much so that we are fearful that we're going to get the wrong looks from someone because we talk about our faith? Are we so worried and paralyzed in fear that we're willing to share the good news of Christ to someone through our lives or our actions as we continue to navigate Christianity? Admitting along the way, we don't have all the answers. We still struggle in our faith from time to time. Amen? Amen? but we serve God who goes with us and says, do not be afraid. I am with you. We just shared in the Great Commission of Matthew 28. And how does Jesus end that? He says, and don't be afraid because I am with you even to the very end of the age. I will be with you. I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty promising. What fears are you struggling with today? What are those fears that are holding back first a more intimate relationship with Jesus? And what fears do you have that are holding you back from sharing the good news to others? Where have we allowed Satan and our humanness to enter in and to cause doubt, worry, fear to enter in? We can try and seek to conquer fear on our own, but Scripture again comforts us and tells us that we need to be reminded, just as we uh, read here in Romans 12, that we, we don't, excuse me, Romans 8, that we don't walk this journey alone, starting in verse 12, that God goes with us, that we are adopted into the family of God, that we are taken in as part of the family, that we can cry out to Him. This is uh, at the end of verse 15. It says, and by Him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, we, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in His sufferings in order that we may also share in His glory. If you brought your Bibles or Bible apps and you're in Romans 8, get your highlighter out and just go crazy in this chapter. Especially starting in verse 31. These are words then that Paul adds on top of it to the early church that was struggling with divisions, that was struggling with fear and worry as they lived in a world that didn't necessarily accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And a world in Rome where they accepted worshiping multiple gods at one time. This idea of Christianity as the Romans would have seen it seemed foreign to them and strange that you would only worship one God and Lord and Savior in Jesus Christ. And so starting in verse 31, this is what Paul says. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he also uh, along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who 
shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall hardships or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword, will any of this separate us from the love of God? In verse 37, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am convinced, listen to this. Again, if you have a highlight, just go crazy here. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither heights nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I don't even have to preach. I just got to read that Scripture, don't I? That's it. Nothing can separate us from God. Nothing can break that relationship apart once we've accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We are called, church, to live in boldness and sharing the good news of Christ to the world around us. The world will come at us, if I paraphrase David uh, from Psalm 56. The world will come at us and will try to track us down and will try to do things to us and sway us against or away from God. Yet God calls us faithfully to remain trusting and living in faith with him what is it that we fear church it's okay (laughs) we have fears we have anxieties we have doubts and worries and that comes with being human but what are we doing with it where are we putting that energy are we coming to god and laying it out and saying this god is what's going on today This is where I'm struggling. Certainly, nowhere in Scripture it it doesn't ever tell us that we can't go and seek a professional to help us as well. To say, this is what I'm going through and I just can't handle this on my own. Can you help me or hear me as I speak? Scripture is full of opportunities and commands for us throughout the Old and New Testament to remain faithful to God, to not fear. And then it gives us these opportunities of places that we can put that energy and fear and anxiety we have. One of my favorite, if you want to call it favorite, one of my go-tos, we'll call it, when anxiety comes. It's not exactly a favorite time when anxiety comes, is it? No. So when it does come, one of the things, especially when I I start to doubt or I start to question, is I'll go into a space, usually it's the sanctuary, I have access to two of them these days, and I'll go into that sanctuary and the quietness of it, and there's, there's quiet time of prayer and saying, God, you know the anxiety, you know the fear, you know the worry and doubt, get rid of it within me. And then there's something that's extremely comforting. I'll just yell in the sanctuary. Get away from me, Satan. Get away. Get away from this congregation. Get away from these people that you have called to be your disciples and your church in this community. Get away from them, Satan. I will encourage you to do the same. Maybe not in the canned fruit aisle of the grocery store. Say it too loud. But within your homes or your cars or in this sanctuary... Don't be afraid when fear and doubt and worry start to build within you to say, Satan, just get away. God's at work here. Scripture calls us that when we call on the name of God, Satan will scatter out and away from us at even the name of Jesus. So, I'm going to invite you this morning because we got to clean out Culp a little bit. So I'm going to ask in a moment that you would just yell along with me, get away, Satan. We're going to try that, okay? It's okay to yell in church. Okay? Kids are doing it downstairs. We're allowed to do it up here. Well, hopefully you don't scare them. Yes. Nancy will wonder what we're talking about up here. So, all right, on the count of three. One, two, three. Get away, Satan. Doesn't that feel good? Doesn't it feel wonderful? Just to claim that you are a follower of Jesus Christ and though you have fears and we have doubts and we have worries that come with this this walk through this world, Jesus calls us to put our trust in Him. If I can get it excuse me, right way around. Jesus calls us to walk with Him that we call on the mighty name of God to drive out the fear and worry in our lives. Again, It is okay to talk with others about fears and worries and anxieties. It is okay to seek professional help and working through fears and anxieties and worries. God calls us to do something with that worry and fear. Not sit on it and stew, but to surrender it, to offer it up, 
to share it with the world around us. Again, from Psalm 56, verse 10, In God whose word I praise, in the Lord whose word I praise, in God I trust and am not afraid, what can man do to me? What can the world do to me when I'm in Jesus, the one who's defeated death? What can the world do in times of trial and difficulty? Because God is with me and on my side. What is it that the church can't do? Because Christ leads us, directs us, and offers us reassurance and comfort throughout our days when it seems the world around us are in pursuit, seeking to cut us off as the church. I'm going to encourage you as a little homework for this week. Uh, School starting. Homework seems on course. I want to encourage you this week, when you find moments of anxiety or you find moments of trouble, or if you're like me, that's just 24-hour going on kind of thing, to turn to Romans 8, starting in verse 31 or starting in verse 37, whatever it might be, and to read the Scripture. I want to challenge you to that this week. When the anxieties come, turn to Scripture. Maybe this prayer will work for you. This Scripture is good for you. Maybe you know another section of Scripture because there's plenty of them that offer us hope and peace. Maybe turn to those and read them and simply offer in a breath or a sigh these words up to God. Verse 18 in Romans 8 says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed, we're reminded that these sufferings are temporary. Don't allow fear. Don't allow the flesh to undo or outdo the ways of the Spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. Our closing song is Christ for the World We Sing. Please stand. Go out, brothers and sisters, and serve Christ this week. Go out not in fear, but with boldness, with excitement and anticipation for the ways that we will share in the kingdom of God here upon this earth. Go, church, ready, equipped, and forgiven to serve God today and every day. All God's people joyfully said, Amen. Amen.